You may have heard me say this before in other training, if you have watched other training of mine, but buyers don't care what you know until they know that you care, right? This isn't being mean. It's just advice to salespeople on um, how to succeed in federal government sales, right? The idea is you just need to understand that buyers don't care what you know until they know that you care. Um, and keep that in mind. One way you can show that you care um, is to understand and really research what keeps customers up at night, right? What's keeping them awake at night? And, and I like to think anytime Congress, the White House or the Washington Post track your agencies, your target agencies, top management challenges, your customers being kept up awake. I mean, kept awake at night, right? And this is what I want to talk about in today's training, um, how you can learn about what's keeping your customer up at night and what you can do to help them so that they can begin to address those management challenges. So that's what we're going to talk about today, top management challenges. Um, if you want to learn how you can support your customer deal with those top management challenges, put know their challenges in the chat or comment. Let me know you're following along with today's topic, K-N-O-W, know their challenges. Um, put that in the chat. If you don't know who I am, my name is Neil McDonald. I am the president of the GovCon Chamber of Commerce, and I want to welcome you to my daily LinkedIn Live uh, federal sales training where we provide tips for success in the federal market. I spent 20 years as a small business owner in the federal market. And since 2018, I've been teaching people like you that government contracting is not a secret. It's just a process. Before we get too far, part of the process is helping buyers, me and others remember who you are. Make sure you put in the chat your core competency, two or three words, along with your company name. Um, we're a network. It's a community that you have this networking ability with others in the government contracting world. And I wanna make sure you're able to meet each other. If you're on YouTube or Facebook, watching the replay or even live, um, come on over to LinkedIn, connect with me, connect with others in um, the community so you can build these relationships and work together. And going with that idea of connecting, if you are open to connecting, do me a favor, um, put into the chat right now, I'm open to connecting. Let others know that you're open to connecting. And then don't stop there. After the training, come back afterwards when all the comments are in here and, and we most of us put, uh, I'm open to connecting in chat, come back in and then connect with those people who just said that they're open to connecting. Um, it's a really good way to just begin to keep building your network. And as you build your network with somebody who's in this community, you'll gain access to other people that they're connected with who might be sharing great information that you could find valuable. Um, so go ahead and put, I'm opening, open to connecting in the chat. Um, as we go forward, I'm going to cover three things, and today is definitely going to be a lot, a lot of information. And remember, this is a, um, a higher level business development capture activity. It's really understanding the customer's um, challenges at the very top agency level. And so I'm going to uh, show you, I'm going to share my screen and go into some of those challenges and show you. Um, then I'm going to talk to you about how you can use what you learn from these reports. How can you use them in business development and capture or in proposal writing? And then finally, I'm going to tell you just how you can find these um, reports that I think are so vital to your success. So let me flip over and share my screen really quick. I'm going to go through as many of these tabs as I can while watching the, the time. Um, and, and there's a lot of information in these um, right here. You see at the top, Office of Inspector General. These are top management challenges facing each agency or, um, or department, right? And so I'm gonna go through at a high level. I can't go into the meat of it, otherwise we'll just use up to 30 minutes. But this is exactly what I do for my customers. When I'm pushing forward on larger level contracts in particular, or when I'm doing business development, um, we have a course out that we teach people how to do business development. And in that course, we tell them, go in here, get this information, and then you can use it as part of your business development effort. And I'll talk more about that in a minute. But so when you look at an OIG report and you just start coming down, um, one of the first things I look for, so this is a, every report's different. I wish they followed a framework, they don't, but they, they provide the same information. You just gotta find it. And so here's an executive summary page. And if I come down into this page, I can see from a high level that these people, this agency for education, they identified five management challenges that they face as um, they continue to focus effort on promoting student achievement. So doing their mission. And then they lay out what are the challenges and they lay out these five challenges. Most of my customers in the IT space, um, one way or another professional development, but certainly not number one, right? Implementing pandemic relief laws. I don't really work with anybody on that. So when I'm looking at this, I'm gonna ignore that for the moment. Um, but I can see that two of these challenges fall squarely in my um, people who are in my workshop in their space, right? Data and information technology or cybersecurity. 
And so I'm going to dig into that. So first thing I do is I take a look at um, that from a high level. I'm like, all right, I understand it. Uh, what I've just determined is that I want to go down to level three and level five, or, or um, excuse me, challenge three and challenge five. I'm not going to do that today, but what I wanted to do is to just go to challenge one and show you the framework. And so when you come in to this, you can see they begin with just stating what the challenge is. And as you move forward, and again, I'm going to try my hardest to avoid diving deep into the report itself, but really just show you the highlights, right? So as you come down, you get an understanding of what the challenge is, and then they tell you why this is a challenge. What are they running into, right? And that's pretty important um, stuff to be paying attention to. And I'm going to jump through these pages as we go forward to the part I want to point out. So I told you challenge one, it didn't interest me because, you know, it's not what my customers are working on. But right as I come through challenge one that had something to do with COVID relief or whatever it was, um, a pandemic relief, right? it says data quality is a factor in why they're running into this challenge. Well, shoot, um, one of the companies I'm working with that has data is really focused on data security and another one's focused in auditing and another's focused on data manipulation and this ability to make better decisions. And I'm looking at this saying, okay, we need to dig down and figure out what are they talking about, right? So I'm not gonna go too deep into the paragraph, but it was an interesting thing for me to initially say, I don't care about challenge one. I don't think it applies to my company. And then I come down, I'm like, oh, they do have a component. And this is the whole point of what I'm trying to teach you is that if you read through strategic documents like this OIG report, Office of Inspector General, if you read through these, you will find just fantastic nuggets about what the agency is running into and how you might be able to help them. So it, it expands right there. Um, the last thing I'm, I'm showing you here, right, table two, it says OIG's recent reports relating to the relief law. So remember, this is still, I'm still in challenge number one, but this table is listing out all these related reports that I can go research. Business development, capture. When you're talking about going after a 10 million, five, 10 million and north, right? Going up into a hundred million, $500 million um, contracts. And that's normal for, my, you know, the pipelines I play in, when you're going after that, then you want to take the time to really be digging in to this information. So they're telling you about more of the reports and that wraps that up. Um, it, it, that allows you to do further research. This next one I wanted to point out is, let me just scroll down to it. So as you're coming down, I'm still in challenge one. I'm still looking at it. This is another section where now OING is talking about, well, we told, if you don't know this, OIG, um, does this report and basically is an oversight. I mean, they literally are oversights of the agency. And uh, okay, everybody turn your phone off, me too. Um, but the idea is that um, they're oversighting the, the agency of the department telling them, hey, these are your biggest challenges. You need to work on this. This is what we observe about you. Really, frankly, the same way I do executive coaching or business development coaching with my customers. I'm saying, this is what I see. You need to work on it. And, and then as you move forward, so from one year to the next, OING comes back and says, well, here's the progress you've been making towards working on those challenges. And that's really important for you to understand because you see that progress, but you also can learn a lot about what have they done already and how can you begin to um, build upon what they're doing when you represent solutions. And then this next section, it talks about what the um, department needs to do. So what they've done already, and this is what they still need to do. Um, I put a little highlight here that says our work continues to identify weaknesses in areas that include recipients, program administration, programmatic oversight, and related data quality and reporting. And the reason I highlighted that is because my data customers, I'm like, hey, well, how can we play in there? How can we begin to talk about it? You say that's what you still need to do. What do you need to do? How can I help? How do I go in and have conversations? So um, that's why I'm digging into this. I just grabbed one line, but there's a lot of good information in that section. Um, and then coming down the very last part of challenge one, I, I'm not going through all of the challenges, but the very last part of challenge one is all those reports again that talk about, um, that, that really dig deeper into any of the challenges the agency is facing. The last section on this one I wanna go to, it, this section is called, um, it's the response from the agency to OING. So OING, um, they do the report and uh, the department comes back and they make comments and almost always their comments are like, oh, you know, we got it covered. Thanks for telling us we're working on it. Um, you know, I don't think there would be a report if they were, you know, had it totally covered. But as you come down, um, you can begin to see, and I don't want to go too far into this, but you can begin to see that um, 
OIG re wrote the report basically for the department to look at. The department looked at it, uh, the secretary and all their subordinate commands, bureaus, whatever. They looked at it and they came back and said, well, you're talking about different things. And here, this one says data quality as an example. But um, actually, let me scoot down to the here. But right here, they're reporting back to ensure effective, timely support to um, applicants, et cetera. We're balancing the need for high quality data collection and reporting processes We've um, implemented several strategies. And the reason I like this and looking at the report is I can see what the department is saying back to OIG. And imagine this, what you are actually doing is basically sitting in a dialogue with the agency where they're talking about, hey, this is what we're running into. Well, this is what we're trying to do. You could not have a better set of information than this OIG report because it's a candid report about the challenges they face and then a response to say, yep, we get that. Here's what we're doing to address it. Sometimes what they're doing is just an idea and they hope to do it, right? But you can capture all that in here and then you feed this all back into opportunities you're working on or, or um, just broader business development activity that you're doing. So that's um, that was education, right? And, and I'm going to go through a little bit different way, but showing you um, Department of Labor, or I think this is Labor, <laughs> Department of Transportation, sorry. Um, and in this one, let me just turn my pen off so I'm not drawing. In this one, right, these are top management challenges. As I come down, a couple of big things I just want to showcase, right? Here, again, it's what we found. OIG, they did, they did the uh, report, and they said, these are the challenges we found for fiscal year 2023, the one we're in. And the part I highlighted, because I'm trying to um, zoom in my time onto you know, the parts that matter to my customers or something. So right here, I can see information security key challenges that they have around preventing cyber attacks and addressing the obstacles to moving forward in zero trust architecture. Well, that's a big part of what my clients pay attention to or any of you who are in cybersecurity, right? So I look at that and I will sit there and drive down um, to that page, which I think I'm going to do in a second. Um, but as I go down, the next table of contents is the same way of looking at the challenges. But I can look at this and say, well, which ones do I want to pay attention to? And I already mentioned the IT one which is one more page down, um, right there, innovation. I don't know, I lost it somewhere. <laughs> information security, there it is, page 19. But then the part I wanted to show you is right here, they're showing a list of last year's challenges. This is great because now I can look at a previous year and the new year and see what's going on. This is a way for you as a business developer or a company trying to get into an agency to, to really ramp up as if you've been in there a few years. Just look at several of these reports and you can see what's happening, what's been going on. And as you move forward, you can use them to have dialogue as you um, have meetings. And then again, the appendix for the department's response is page 30 there. A um, couple other pages I just want to pull out here that show you uh, some of the information that pops up, right? And thinking about this from an IT perspective for me, but <clears throat> something I highlighted, right? As the department addresses these challenges, it's going to be focused on one of their critical goals, which is fostering transformation and innovation. And so if you're part of the digital transformation uh, world, then, you know, you look in here and you begin to see that. And go, well, what else are you saying? Technological changes that they're going to be having. I want to track on that. Um, one other thing that I found really useful in DOT's OIG report here was that they considered several criteria and they're defining what was the criteria for determining the department's top challenges in the fiscal year. And so here they talk about um, the criteria was safety impact, documented vulnerabilities, large dollar implications and whether they even have the ability to make the change. And so as they went through, um, they were talking about, this is what they're working on. Let me go down to, uh, I don't know if I had one more thing. Yeah, one more thing here. So right here, this one, I just wanted to show again, um, this is an index, basically a department of transportation is a department, then you have sub agencies, so FRA or FAA, um, and in there, one of the things I liked is it aligned the subordinate agencies to the challenges. And so if I was in Avis aviation, I could look right here and obviously say FAA. But because I had said that I'm interested in that information security challenge they have, I circled, uh, which makes sense. What it's saying is it's department wide. It's every agency. But this is something you should do, that if you're in service transformation, <laughs> transportation, then you would want to look at FTA as an example. So this is a great um, type of page that helps you just search more. Um, so let me jump down here. This is the one that I said, the challenge that I liked. <clears throat> and so when I come in, one of the things I, I saw right away caught my eye was um, where they're talking about more than 400 information systems, IT systems that they have 
related to securing. I work with multiple cybersecurity companies and data security companies, right? Companies that are doing ATOs and RMFs. This is kind of that space, right? And so I circled this whole thing because it really was speaking to what I want. I could see uh, taking that in and saying, this is what I was talking or reading. Let's talk about this, right? When I'm doing business development or capture. A um, couple other things right here as you look at it, right? As I was highlighting it, <clears throat> I was just highlighting some of their, um, their key issues that they're running into just for this one challenge. But they talk about DOT's information systems continue to face high risk security vulnerabilities. In sales, that is a golden line for the customer to be saying, because I mean, that's really an explicit need, but I'll treat it like an implied need, like they're just saying it is, but they haven't really yelled that it is. Um, but they're talking about high risk security vulnerabilities. Well, funny that my company uh, manages high risk security vulnerabilities in, in agencies just like ours, yours, can I talk to you about it, right? So seeing that and, and this idea of digging further into it, same thing with the next one, if you've read ahead, right? Um, their audits continue to note systematic, uh, systemic weaknesses. What are those systemic weaknesses? I wanna get in there and pull a thread on that pain, right? If you don't understand sales, sales is about identifying a pain, right? Hey, my arm hurts. And then sticking a stick in there, the stick is a question, and you just kind of keep asking questions until that pain is so bad. I'm like, I give uncle, whatever. Right? And I don't mean to make it sound so brutal, but the point is you can't just let them sit there with a pain that they'll get used to and it gets hidden. You need to make that pain so severe that they get off the couch and go to the doctor. In your case, you're the doctor, right? You have the solution. Um, coming down, same thing. When you look at these next set of uh, highlights, right? DOT continues to face, they continue to face challenges addressing the under, underlying root causes of security weaknesses. They've identified 10,000 open security weaknesses um, identified in their poems. This is important information. And really, this is the same, like I said before, as if you sat down with a program office and began to have a conversation about, hey, what are you guys running into? How realistic is it to have somebody say, man, we continue to have problems addressing the underlying root cause? but they're saying it right here. So now when you go in and you have meetings, you'll be able to reference this and explore that further with them. How can I help? Well, the way you can help is by listening. Remember, nobody cares what you know until they know that you care. When you come in referencing and talking about this, they'll know that you care. They'll know that you did your homework. Um, I, I think I'm running out of time and I got a couple other things I wanna show you uh, on here, but I just wanna point out, I did the same exercise uh, with Department of Labor, right? I can come down here and I can decide uh, to circle which ones matter to me. So this one is securing and managing information systems. Um, DOD has a huge one and, and laid this out, but DOD is so big. They also have separate ones where they talk about, here's their top 20 cyber challenges. And so when you think about your agencies, you should be finding the top challenges that are out there in the Office of Inspector General with their reports is a great place to start. So if you're following with what I was just trying to show you there, do me a favor, in the chat, put top challenges. Just let me know that you're tracking on top challenges and you saw that. Um, and I wanna move on to uh, the next slide I wanna talk about is um, just how you can use what you learned. It's not enough to just go gather this information, right? Paralysis by analysis. I don't need you to do research for research's sake or any other cliche I can throw into this mix, right? What I want is for you to be able to read that in a way that makes you so competitively different from your competitors, right? You will be going in, talking to them literally about their challenges. And so I wanna to talk to, to you about how you can use what you read in these documents in business development, capture management, or proposal writing. And just a couple of tips, right? I'm not giving you everything that you could do, but just getting your um, it rolling for you. So for a business developer, right? You can use it to explore those challenges further. I mentioned this already. Um, you have systematic issues that were mentioned in the OIG report. What are those? Can we can we talk about those a little bit? Why are you running into it? And it says continuing to run into these issues. Why do you think you're continuing to run into it, right? So you're learning um, more about that issue. And then you're also trying to find out um, uh, the implication, right? Who else is impacted and, and perhaps who's trying to address this problem? I call those, or we in the sales, right? We call these implication questions. You're having an, a discussion around the implications of the problem. If the problem is you have a systematic um, set of vulnerabilities or whatever it was that we said, right? If that's your problem, well, 
Who is it impacting? Why is this a big deal? Will it shut down whole information systems and so then HR can't do their job? You know, that kind of activity. So business development, you're just trying to have those discussions um, with the person with no opportunity in mind. You're just trying to understand them further. And then going with the, uh, the second tip for business development is by having this information, you can use it to begin to identify opportunities that they'll be uh, pursuing to address the challenges or better yet, you can get in there and really start shaping a new opportunity, talking to them about, well, this is what we're doing in another agency, or have you thought about doing this? You can go in there and start having a dialogue. You're not bringing a product, even if it's IT solutions, you're not bringing a, um, the prescription, right? Right out the prescription, here it is. You're having the discussion and you're working together to shape a prescription, shape a solution that will help them. So business development, that's one of your biggest jobs is to put opportunities at the top of the pipeline that are slam dunk opportunities. And this is a way to do that. Um, another thing to keep in mind as you move forward on using the information you have, if you're in capture management, capture to me when I say it means one opportunity. I don't care if you've got several opportunities in the pipeline, capture is about one opportunity. You're either working on this one or you're working on that one, but you're only working on one opportunity. And so when you think about using the um, knowledge you gain from the OIG reports, you can use that, like I said, about sticking a stick in the pain and kind of rolling it around, you can use it to explore the pain as it relates to that one opportunity. You know this opportunity is coming out and it's coming out. When you talk about a $10 million or $100 million opportunity, these are coming out six, 24 months down the road. You got lots of time to do capture. So you can get in there and begin to um, explore that pain and understand it much more than they will ever put in the RFP or the draft PWS or whatever. And you can begin to have conversations um, and this is the second tip, you can begin to have uh, conversations around the solutioning side of the house, right? To explore the solutions they've already thought about when they uh, when they recognize the challenges, documented the challenges, and they're communicating back to OIG. It's like, hey, this is what we're doing. Well, you can begin to understand what are they thinking already for solutioning and where can um, you shape that, right? How can you begin to uh, shape that solution in a way that goes to each, your company's strengths? But you can also begin to understand how to align the solution you're, you're going to probably offer at the RFP stage. How can you align that solution um, to what they've already seen as the bigger picture that they're trying to do uh, within the government? So what I mean is if they've got a, a big agency challenge and they're trying to address it, and here's an opportunity that's just one opportunity along that challenge life cycle, if you will, how can you shape your solution so it not only is addressing the requirement and that opportunity, but also being seen as being part of that bigger solution. So the last one is proposal um, writing. Make sure anything I ever tell you about these things, teach your proposal writers. They're generally not gonna be in my training as much because my training is really about sales, um, but it's so valuable because capture and proposal, BD and proposal, we work together. Um, but you can make a much stronger executive summary, in my opinion, if you can um, talk less about your company, right? You don't need this big executive summary blabbering all this stuff about, I don't, you know, I don't want to uh, say anything in particular because you might have it in your, your summary, but your summary should be about them. It should be about the solution. It should be about the challenges. And so you can have a much stronger executive summary when they read it. They don't feel like they're just reading your website or your capability statement, but they're reading a company that understands us and our challenges. And they have a high level solution that they're going to explore in the next 25 or 50 pages. But you can use that by referencing agency priority goals and these agency challenges. Um, another way on proposal writing is to reference or weave these top challenges, the ones you actually can address. Weave those through your proposal content wherever you can. It, the more you can kind of reference that, especially the bigger the dollar value is on the opportunity, the more chance the person at the agency um, is aware of the OIG report and aware of these top challenges. The lower the dollar value, I mean, sometimes people don't even read their own strategic plans, right? But weave those challenges throughout the um, proposal content so that you can show that, hey, we're recommending this kind of thing. And this will tie back to some of the challenges. You don't have to actually even reference the challenge so much as uh, ghost it in a way where um, by the very language that you're using and the way you're describing the benefit to the agency, they'll look at that and go, you know what, that'll help us with this problem over there. And if that happens, that's good. That's exactly what you're trying to get them to see without flat out saying, hey, we'll help this challenge and that challenge. Um, okay, so a lot of stuff in there. Last tip I wanna provide really fast, uh, cause I have limited time here is where to find the OIG reports agency website. 
Uh, another one is you ask the small business specialist of the program office. Third one is reach directly out to the OIG. Um, learn who they are. If you're doing business development, you should establish a relationship with them just like you do with the program office or the acquisition shop. And the last one is searching Google using file type colon PDF and then top management challenges. Um, that's what I do. And sometimes I'll put in that uh, site colon dot uh, mill or dot gov and it'll narrow that search down. Hopefully somebody will throw that in the chat so I can move through um, and make sure I don't, I don't ever like to go over. That's why I rush towards the end. I don't like to go over. But in this training, I shared why OIG reports are so vital to your sales success in the federal market. Um, we talked about how to use the information you find and then how to find those agency reports for your target agency. And the tip I want you to take away, the one task I want you to go do is to go find your target agency's OIG report today. Just even if you don't read it today, go get it five minute task, go get that OIG report, have it. And, and then your next task later is to actually read it. So if you found today's training valuable, let us know, put thanks into the chat. We always appreciate that. Uh, if you'd like to be part of our BD Accelerator workshop starting in February, then send me a message in LinkedIn. Uh, the workshop tends to be for companies that are doing about a million or more in revenue and want our help to be able to go to the next level. That's really where we really play there. Remember government contracting, it is not a secret. It's just a process, just a process. I'll see you in the next